On a very regular basis, I receive many questions about many different aspects of our Line 6 Helix. And one of the topics I see and am asked a lot of questions about is, is some of the parameters that are just general parameters within the AMP models. And I oftentimes see a lot of confusion. One question is, and a topic I've covered before, is the difference between master volume and channel volume. Channel volume just simply being the final output of the AMP model block without affecting the tone other than just bringing whatever tone we've dialed in up or down, whereas the master master is actually going to control the power tubes and by changing that parameter we can really affect the tone and the amount of drive we get out of those power tubes. Well another common question is what's the difference between the drive control and the master control or the drive control sometimes known as the gain control on many real world amps. Well there is a dramatic drastic difference between those and if we don't have a full understanding of what each of these controls is actually controlling and how that affects the tone we could possibly be missing out on getting as much out of our preset as is possible or attaining the goals we're looking for. So today we are going to go in depth on the difference between that drive control and that master control and hopefully that will help you to be able to tweak your presets even more to get exactly what you want out of them. So here we are over in Helix Native and again I always get these questions when I use Helix Native about where do I get the meters on HX Edit? This is not HX Edit and it's not possible from my understanding. This is another question I get a lot. A little side point has nothing to do with this video. So when I play you'll see these meters are bouncing on inputs and outputs and folks ask me all the time why can't we have those meters on HX Edit? And my understanding is simply that HX Edit is just an editing piece of software for our Helix. It doesn't pass audio. That's why we don't have you know, a tuner on it or any of these other functions like meters. So that's why I, I just have to say this because every time I do a video using Helix Native, I get tons of questions about this. So that's the answer. And uh, unfortunately, I wish I could do something about it, but I can't. So here we are. So let me explain what I have going on here. I have a, a four snapshot preset. You'll notice I, I've got a, a simple 412 Greenback 25, the 160 ribbon, three and a half inches back, low and high cut, whatever. That's my cab I chose. I have uh, one placator dirty, and I, uh, this is what's going to be used for uh, snapshot one and two. You'll notice snapshot one is labeled preamp. So I've set that so that the drive control is on 10, but the master is on three. And then if I switch to power amp, uh, the drive control goes down to 3.1. I guess I meant to have that on three. And the master goes up to 10. So it's, it's swapping the drive and the master sort of from low to high setting and then reversing that. And then I have the same thing. And I'm going to explain why I'm doing this in just a second. Uh, Snapshot 3 is a different amp, the Brit 2204, just so we have a different example. And the same sort of thing. Preamp is with the drive on 10 and the master on 2. And then... Power amp is with the drive on two and the master on 10. So why am I labeling this preamp and power amp? Well, here's really what the difference is between these two controls, our drive control and our master control. The drive control is controlling how hard we're driving the preamp section of our amplifier. Almost all amplifiers are going to have a preamp section, which is where the drive control or the preamp tubes and the tone stack, bass, middle, treble, sometimes presence, are going to reside. So these tone stack controls are going to help shape the sound of the preamp. At times we do have models that also have maybe a presence control as part of the power section or a resonance or depth control as part of the power section. But for now, in this example, we are simply using this as the tone stack. So all of this up here can kind of be considered preamp, you know, before this channel volume control here. Then we have the master control, and that is going to control the power amp tubes and how hard those are driven. So what's the difference between preamp and power amp distortion? Well, we're gonna show audio examples in just a second, but generally it can be said that if we are getting our overdrive or our saturation from our drive controller or our preamp section, it's going to maybe be higher gain, maybe a little fizzier and thinner, and I hate to make these generalizations, but this is just kind of a general idea. Uh, depending on the amp model, we may get various results. Uh, we're probably, like I said, gonna get higher gain, maybe a little more fizzy and maybe harsh and much more compressed, a lot more built-in compression to that. Whereas if we are setting our driver, our preamp at a much lower setting and our master higher, we're now pushing those power tubes into saturation. We're going to have 
still gain an overdrive. And again, depending on the amp model is gonna vary, but we're going to have a much more dynamic sound, probably a little bit lower gain, but like I mentioned, less compressed. And a lot of really wonderful old classic tones were the sound of cranked power sections, where we just hitting those power tubes and getting this very almost I hate to say it, but clean overdrive or clean distortion with lots of dynamics. So a lot of people don't realize that difference between those two and don't know that maybe we can actually massage more tones out of an amp by subtle settings and subtle balances between the drive and the master control. A lot of folks think I need more overdrive. I'm just going to go up to my drive control and crank it or I'm going to put it up to eight and that's going to give me the saturation in the overdrive I'm looking for. And then that's very true, but is it the type of overdrive or distortion that we want? So what we can do here now is we can go here and take the placator dirty with the drive on 10 and the master on three. So otherwise driving the preamp section very hard and not really driving the master section as hard. And that sounds like this. <laughs> All right, definitely a very saturated tone. Now, if I take that and switch that over to driving the power amp harder in the same amp model, all the other settings the same, but bringing that drive down. Now I have brought the channel volume down just because that, as we know, that doesn't affect the tone. It's just to bring the volume more in line with the first snapshot. Here's what this sounds like. And I'll switch back and forth between these after to compare them closer. <laughs> very, very different tones from the same amp. So let's go back and forth between those so you can hear the comparison a little closer between the two. think what a dramatic difference between tones on the same amp now obviously if we did decide to go with this master section using it this way we may even shape the tone different with our tone stack and maybe we feel like there was you know too many mids and we want a little more uh, presence and treble <laughs> So we still can shape the tone, but really access the power section for our overdrive punch and distortion. Now, obviously our mileage is going to vary on this depending on the different amp models we use. Uh, it really has a lot to do with how the original amp designer designed the circuitry. And, and I, you know, that's above my pay scale. I am not an amp designer. I understand the basics of how these things work, but really when an amp designer makes these, he's going to have his own ideas and know how to accomplish them. So these interactions between preamp and power amp are going to obviously be very different with every amp depending on how that amp was designed. So that's food for thought. So we're going to have to experiment with this on our own. I'm obviously not going to be able to go through every amp that has a preamp and power tube section and, you know, go through them to see how they react. But we will do one more. And I chose the Brit 2204 as I was messing around with this. This seemed like a nice example. So here's the version of the 2204 with the preamp being pushed harder. <laughs> Now let's go to the power amp version of that.
we get a similar difference between the first example and this. And again, we could always come in and tweak this tone stack for the power amp version. <laughs> And we can tweak that to get the results that we want as far as the general tone shaping, but we really can hear the difference between the different types of overdrive and saturation we get depending on whether we are driving the preamp tubes or the power amp tubes. All right, what did everybody think of that? You know, it's funny, I oftentimes take for granted after using tube amps for years and after studying this type of topic for years that, you know, everybody must know the difference between, you know, the preamp section and the power amp section. And it's very evident a lot of times when I get questions that there's a lot of folks who haven't used this before. And that's fine. We all start somewhere. We all have to learn about these things. Now, many, many folks already know this and this video isn't really aimed at those folks, but I get so many questions about these topics. I thought this would be a a great video to really set people that aren't aware of this in the right direction to really be able to get better results out of their tones. And even if they're taking an existing tone, maybe a tone of mine from the Line 6 Marketplace that they like, but they want to just tweak it a little bit, they now know that, you know, by moving the master versus the drive or vice versa, they are going to get very different results. And if we have a sound in our head we're looking for, the more knowledge we have like this, the easier it's gonna be for us to be able to tweak our tone in a way that's gonna give us what we want. So I really hope that that was helpful for everybody. Thank you guys so much for sharing your time with me. Please like the video and please share this with anybody who you really think could get some use or enjoyment out of watching it. And please subscribe to the channel, hit the little bell notification to get notified when I put new content out. I will be back really soon with some more. Thank you guys again so much for tuning in and sharing your time with me. Ciao for now.